My name is Nick and this is Crime Doc. I've got one of these cool frames here, but they only work if uh, you're moving. I don't know if you can see this. <laughs> Terrifying. Halloween's one of our favorite holidays, so this week we're gonna do something a little bit different. So let's get straight into it. Five shocking crimes, one fateful day, October the 31st. Peter Fabiano didn't get treat, that's for sure. When he opened the door of his Los Angeles home on October the 31st, 1957, he found a woman standing there wearing a mask. She raised her hand, which was in a paper bag. I just gave it away. She raised her hand, which was in a paper bag, and she shot him in the chest. His wife, Betty, rushed to his side to help him, but he died that night. Betty immediately suspected Joan Rebel a former lover of Betty's who was jealous when she got back with her husband. It's believed Joan talked her new girlfriend, Golden Pizer, into pulling the trigger. Both were convicted of second degree murder, but released a few years later. When you are short of cash and struggling to get by, there are a few solutions at your disposal. Poisoning your own child to claim on the life insurance probably isn't high up on the list. Here's, however, what Ronald Clark O'Brien chose to do on Halloween in 1974. In debt to the tune of a hundred thousand dollars. O'Brien handed out pixie sticks laced with cyanide after a night of trick or treating. He distributed the poison candy to his two kids and some other children in the neighborhood to try and cover up his crime. Only his son, Timothy, ate the sweet, which killed him in just a few hours. When police found out about his financial issues, O'Brien was quickly suspected and arrested. During his trial, the press dubbed O'Brien the Candyman. On the 3rd of June, 1975, it took a jury just 46 minutes to find O'Brien guilty of capital murder and four counts of attempted murder. He was executed on the 31st of March, 1984. On the morning of October the 1st, 1975, the lifeless body of a 15 year old American high school student was found in her parents' garden at the bottom of a tree. The autopsy indicated that Martha Moxley had been bludgeoned to death with a golf club. Thomas Skackle was the last person to be seen with Martha on the night of the murder. He became prime suspect, but his dad forbade access to his school and mental health records. Over the years, both Thomas and his younger brother, Michael, significantly changed their alibis for the night of Moxley's murder. However, no one was charged and the case languished for decades. It wasn't until the year 2000 that Michael Skackle was arrested and charged with the murder of Martha Moxley. He was found guilty in 2002, but since then he has successfully overturned the ruling and he's a free man. At 21 years old, Bronx resident Carl Jackson was a young and discreet man living a peaceful life with his girlfriend and her son. On Halloween night, 1998, he took his car to go pick up the little boy from a party. En route, a group of youths hurled eggs at the car. He got out to yell at the pranksters to stop and then got back in his vehicle. One of the teenagers then got out a gun and shot Carl dead with a bullet to the head. 17 year old Curtis Sterling was charged with second degree murder and criminal possession of a weapon. He was convicted and is currently serving 20 years. According to the New York Times, he receives a card in prison every year on Halloween, which reads, I'm glad you're still there from Jackson's mum. Lauren lived in a flat share with two of her friends. After a fun Halloween night handing out candies to kids who came by their home in Napa, California, at around 11 p.m. the three women decided to go to bed. Leslie and Adrian went to bed on the first floor and Lauren slept in the room on the ground floor. At around one, Lauren woke to screams coming from the upstairs bedroom. After having heard someone flee the scene, she ran upstairs to discover both her flatmates savagely stabbed to death. The guilty man, Eric Matthew Koppel, would turn out to be the fiance of one of Adrian's friends, jealous of their relationship. He is currently serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. It would appear Halloween can bring out the worst in some people. If you enjoyed this video, comment below, hit the like button, and feel free to subscribe. Until next time, stay safe and look after yourselves.